Good after good <laughs> afternoon and welcome to Metro AV Tech Tips. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And we're back in our lab this week. Yes, We'd we like are. to thank the car audio guys, yes. Chase and his crew, for allowing us the use of their studio last week, which yeah. it, it, honestly actually, is much nicer we're, than we're, ours. We're super jelly about it. I mean, we're, yeah. we really are. And, and, uh, well, and actually, well, back up, back up. At no point in my life have I been jelly of anything. Well, anyways. Do you so, mean jealous? Yeah, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll go with that. So actually what's happening now is that we actually have off camera over here, we've got Jason uh, who's going to be helping us out with today's episode. So there he is. Thank you so much, Jason. He is the Relay Master and today's topic is? Uh, relays. What are they? Uh, is basically what today's episode is about. So we've got, uh, you know, if for for anybody who's out there who's done any kind of automation uh, or who's done any kind of car audio or car accessories or anything like that, you're very familiar with relays or security, especially security. Uh, you're very familiar with relays. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was kind of bring us back to basics because last week we talked about AVRs and it, it did very well. And everybody who was in the comment section last week, thank you so much for, of course, commenting on that. Uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell notification to let you know when we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. And now we're starting our Friday episodes. And listen to it last week. You guys did a fantastic yep, job. Yep, we had Will on there helping, helping me out with that episode. So, and I think this week you're out again as I'm well, I'm out correct? again. I actually, you know, am obligated once or twice a year to do some actual work. Okay, yeah. Will, so, Will's yeah. out again also. I might be stepping in. You might be stepping in? All and right, we, this got, week's man, episode, we got a producer. This week's episode <laughs> following today's... Yeah, talk about relays. Yep. ...is the CS-IR kit CCUS. Yes. Which is a relay included IR connecting block. Exactly, and it is still part of our giveaway. We're rolling that into today. Today is the final time for this. So how this works for you guys out, out watching the video today uh, or after the fact, if you leave a comment or a chat in today's episode, either over here in the chat section or down in the comment section below, thank you, Brandon, for fixing the camera, um, you will be put in the runnings to win a CS IR kit CCUS and an HDM-AIO2. Uh, what those, of, of course, work together really well to fix HDMI problems. Of course, the AIO, we've gone over that many, many times. You can go back and watch videos about that uh, as well. And we'll go over more about what this can do as the show progresses. Yes, exactly. So, okay. So, first off, let's start with a little history because you've done this and you know more than I do about the history of this. Yeah. You asked me a question earlier that I don't know, so I'm going to ask you. Why is it called a relay? So, we have to go back in time. Right, so you know, dial that clock back and all that kind of stuff. We don't have that. We don't have those. Um, no, no. <laughs> not quite, not quite. Now this was after the dinosaurs, so you you uh, you were already around at this point. So. Legacy fella. Anyways, yeah, le le legacy fella. Uh, we've got Steve Barrett in the chat. Steve, it's great to see you there. Uh, I believe Steve was in uh, last week's episode as well, uh, commenting and stuff. So, some history first. A relay, or the first relay, was invented in 1835. Now, like these things normally go, there was a little bit of a who actually invented it thing going on. There's oh, one so there's of, a little of, bit of a battle? Yeah, a little bit of a battle. There's two gentlemen. Uh, uh, one uh, from the U.S. was a Joseph Henry, and then one from the U.K. was Edward Davy. And they both said that they invented it in the same year of 1835. So we either have ancient aliens things going on where they both got you know got it from the, the, from the stars. Woo, pyramids! Uh, pyramids, or... Uh, one of them invented it and the other one stole it and went over to the UK and did it or one came over to the US and did it or however that works. Anyways. Or they actually both were very smart at the same time. That's a very real to fill, possibility. To fill a problem. Yeah. So, that's where it was and that's kind of well, history for it. So, but what why? was the purpose of the relay? So, it was actually because of the telegraph. And so, essentially, the telegraph is a relay Kind of. It's it's half of a relay, essentially, is what it is. And so, with the telegraph, what's happening is, is of course, you are opening and closing a signal, and you're you're transmitting an electrical. It's just a pulse. momentary. It's a spring-loaded momentary contact switch. Exactly. And so, you're sending that pulse along uh, for a long distance. And so, the relay was created to relay that message when it got to the end of that of however far it could run. So the voltage was that. starting to collapse over distance. Exactly. And the relay could recognize that voltage trigger at a lower rate. Yes. And recreate a new voltage trigger to match the previous one. Right. Where do we know this from? Well, in today's world, uh, we know this very well because of our GA1 and GA2. And what do they do? They take an HDMI signal for open and close and they restructure it or re recreate it uh, to send it out and again. And what to go is a an HDMI further. signal? It's ones and zeros, opens and closes, and and relays. Voltage basically, is at that on point. and off. That's all yeah. it is. Is a very very fast yes relay. Exactly. So, 
And there you go. It all ties together. It History all ties, just you know, goes yeah, in a circle. It, just, it repeats itself. It just continues to go forward and backwards. Um, okay, so the relay is now being created. We're at 1835. We're going forward. Yes. As an old man, legacy fellow, Yep. for us, relays, most of us in this industry that are my age started in car audio. Yes. Because there was no home automation. Right. Relays were very important to us, and the reason for a relay was very seldomly did you have a switch you could mount to a dashboard or to a radio mm -hmm. that could pass sufficient current to do some of the projects we were doing. Now, this could be an amplifier. It could be fog lights, early fog lights, halogen fog lights. Oh, yeah. Drew a lot of current and would melt a typical switch. Yep. So we put in relays, and for us, it was the Bosch. In fact, I think I saw you had yep. an opened up relay. Yes. Yeah. Now, this is nice because, and by the way, this is a Metro part that has the wiring harness built onto it, so you're not having to yep. do all the, the bits yourself. That's an, this is an awesome. They can get that in inst install bay? Install bay catalog. Install bay catalog. Yep. Now, this is opened up, and Jason, tell us about what's in a relay. So, I'm going to make him work here. <laughs> purpose. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, can, can we hear him through that mic? Uh, now he is now. Yeah. yeah. So the purpose of a relay, there's, there's really three main reasons. One is amplification. The other one is inversion. And uh, the second one, or the third one, is isolation. So those are the three main reasons why we use them in the uh, mobile electronics industry. And our world, too. Yep. And I'm sure your world, too. Every world. That's the purpose of a relay. So the relay has a coil um, in it. And that coil is draped across... Uh, terminals 85 and 86 in this particular application. So when you have positive on one side of that uh, that terminal and negative on the other side, it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field then moves a, con a contact switch to another terminal. So it starts at one terminal and it moves to another terminal. So the terminal that uh, is common between those two points is what we call 30 or it's called the common. So that's a stationary um, piece that is designed to rest in one position and when that coil energizes it pulls it to another position and that's how you can have uh, an amplification circuit so you can put 12 volts on the common side for our our side of the industry anyway 12 volts on the common side and um, uh, your whatever you're looking to supply that higher amperage on 87 for example which would be one of those other terminals when that relay clicks, it's going to pass that high current, and that would be an amplification. Relay. So, Jason, you and I were talking about this off camera. Mm -hmm. um, the one of the things that that you you started labeling the numbers and and whatever those meant. Uh, do they mean anything? Or do, so we we had thirty and eighty five and eighty six and so 87, 87 a. It it is. Um, I mean, typically in you know with this particular relay here, eighty five and eighty six are going to be your coils. So that is uh, where you're going to need your your 12 volt and your ground, and that's going to energize that magnetic field, right? Um, and that's what's going to control the switch. So, um, how I used to describe this is uh, a light switch. Um, a light switch. If I'm a, if I am the coil, I'm manually turning this thing on and off, and that's what this coil does. So, so really, you're, you're a tool. tool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I've been called worse, but a tool is an accurate description. Um, so, it. Um, what there there are numbers that are associated with those terminals um, 85 86 87 30 and 87 a those all mean something right uh, if you're looking at it from an outside maybe you're not very familiar with relays or those numbers um, you also have um, things that associate them like no, normally open or normally closed or common um, and I think we've got I'm not sure if this is too early or that, too that soon. That one's right? a, a dual dual pull. No, sorry, uh, single, single pull, pull dual double throw. throw. Yeah. So, so um, I'm not sure. Can, can you do top down? This one here gets you the top down. Go ahead. So, so I'm not sure if we can see that, a but, but um, tilt, give it a little tilt. tilt this way. There you go. There we Perfect. go. So, so here, on either side, is our coil. So that's 85 and that's 86. 30 is our common. 30 is what moves between 87 and 87A. So, um, and you can see it's without a diagram like you see below here, it's really hard to figure out exactly what this relay does and how it can benefit you. 
So, uh, and that's why referring to these things as normally open, normally closed, common, um, is, um, is a benefit, especially if you're not familiar with the numbers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna step in here just to, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna step in here just a second. Would you give me an overhead? Boy, this is a this is always hard. You <laughs> now this it. is an Alexa enabled relay device. Bring it back to you. There you go. And when you look at it, you'll see that we have normally open and normally closed positions, the 87 and the 87A off the common. Right. And that's already in here. So this allows you to go either side of this so you don't have to do any specific programming. It just depends on where you put your wires. Right. Now Tell me, why would you use a normally open or normally closed switch? So, what is the purpose? There, there's a couple of reasons that, that we would use that. Let me switch back over there for our camera real quick here and take my mask off. So, what we've got going on um, for normally uh, normally open, normally closed. By the way, uh, we really want to thank Jason for swinging by. Uh, Jason, how much time did we give you? Uh, and asking if you were going to sw uh, swing by and, and help us out today. Yeah, actually, he I, I swung was by and we all grabbed him. Like, like three minutes. minutes. <laughs> he, was, he was in here getting something else. And we're like, hey, you know a lot about relays. So, again, Jason, thank you so much for helping out with us today. And if you guys haven't seen on the Metro site, Jason does a lot of great videos, mm -hmm. which are also incredibly educational. And we are really jealous of his studio. Very jealous of his studio. So, <laughs> so you can do a lot with relays. Um, my recommendation is just to focus on a diagram and not really worry about the numbers and looking at the relay and try to understanding that. If you can do that and, and you can see this diagram, there's not much that you can accomplish. So Very thanks, cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. We thanks, appreciate Jason. you stopping really by. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, anyway, come back so. early. Come back often. Don't forget <laughs> to tip your waiter. <laughs> so when we are dealing with normally open and normally closed, when would you do one or the other? That, that was the question, correct? Yes. Okay. So. Well, uh, I, well, for me, anyways, it's going to depend on what device I'm controlling. Because sometimes you would want. So uh, let's use. I'm trying to think of, a, of an example of something that we would want to do. Um, well, let's take a gate control. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Because you and I both do automation. Yep. We both do gate controls. Yeah. If we want the gate closed as its normal position. Yes. You know. That's what we want closed. Typically, what position is required on that relay? So if we're closing the gate, at that point, the relay would be open. Uh, in, in most cases that I've dealt with, with gate controls that only have uh, a, either an open or a closed setting, uh, some of them will have like dual relays uh, mm -hmm. in them, one to trigger it open, one to trigger it closed, and you would control that separately. Generally, it, generally it's just a single pole and right. closed energizes the gate and it closes. Right. Oh, for you? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. So, Close is closed. Open, when you remove the voltage, it flips it the other way. And it opens up the gate. Yep. So then at um, that point, and you're... have had great results with this. Yeah. Piece from the Amazon. Oh, for... that's right, because, yeah, you actually yeah. did run, run yeah. into the actual gate problem with that. So mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of it is really going to depend on the manufacturer of the device that you're application. controlling, the application. And whether or not they use the normally close in that aspect, or if they use it in the other way where it's normally open, and to, uh, it, if it sees a contact, then it's going to close it. Or if it sees a contact, then it's going to open now, it. Now, in a lot of cases, I've added bells or ringers or something to an automation package. Like right. with Crestron, I will take a doorbell into an I.O. on a Crestron mm -hmm. and then send out a relay, uh, trigger a relay to power up a ringing bell or something yep. like that. At that point, normally open because we don't want yes. the bell to ring. We don't want the bell to ring. We don't want the light on. We right. want it to, to be something else. So we, we trigger it at that point to... When something happens, close the relay. Now let's and use our. it's on a timed application. Yeah, exactly. Now let's let's use our AIO two as an example. Okay. So with our AIO two, it is a normally open relay inside. The, the, of it, it defaults to normally open. Yes. And the way the AIO works mm -hmm. is it allows you to control hot plug between the display and the source, so that the source knows the display is there. Right. Now, the advantage of having the AAO is the ability to interrupt that hot plug so the source renegotiates status with the display. Yes. When the relay is closed, it means there's hot plug. Right. So the display and the source are fully connected. They're talking to each other. However, when you change inputs, you want to, to have that interrupt so yep. that it renegotiates. Yep. So you open up that. Open the relay and then yep. close the relay again. So what's happening there is we're removing voltage for the relay itself, which then collapses the magnetic uh, structure of it, which then releases that, that connection. 
and then we ha we are now open, and so that's what's happening inside yes. the AIO too. And then of course when we re-energize it, and energize is always fun because it's like we're energizing. We're it's, it's Star Trek, right? Um, by the way, while we're talking about this, guys, um, leave us a, a, a comment down below or over here in the chat to let us know how you use relays. What we want to hear is it, we, we want that that back and forth. We want that communication with you. We want to hear how you've used relays. Give us some really interesting ways well, now, that you've one used of the, it. One of the things that you and I recommend mm -hmm. relays on is extenders. Yes. When the extender system's off, run power through a relay. Mm -hmm. So when you're not using the extender, the extender's not eating up current, it's not staying warm, it's off. Well, now, when you're talking about extenders, let's... HD base T, -based T or, or HDMI extenders. Or extenders, yes, yeah. exactly. And that's a good thing to do, because most of the time with those extenders, it's DC power, so you can take the negative or the positive and run, run that through, a, through relay. a relay, and then whenever it's, it's on, you close that relay. Whenever you're done watching it, you open that relay. It makes and it really simple. These things are best when they're not on all the time. So, Brent, let's do this. Let's step back a little bit and let's talk about the, diff the different forms of relays. Well, right? We or certainly the have a number of, of form f relay form factors so, on our counter. And, and now we're not exactly talking about, well, okay, so there, there's two different things to talk about. There's types of relays and then there's forms of relays or, or, or different types of operational relays. Okay. So the types of relays, there's um, quite a few. If, if we go on to, I just went on to Wikipedia to look up this stuff and literally there's, uh, let's see, We've got coaxial relay, contactor, force guided contact relay, latching relay. I don't know what a coaxial relay. relay is. That one's uh, a term I've never heard. That one, uh, it says there's radio transmitters and receivers share one antenna. Often a coaxial relay is used as a transmit receive relay, which switches the antenna from the receiver to the transmitter. So okay, it's, it's, like a it's, CB radio. It's, it's, it's like an inline coaxial. It's inside the radio. Yeah, to, exactly. It'd be in the radio, right? Yeah. Okay. So then you've got a contactor, force guided relay, latching relay, machine tool relay. Now, now, latching relays. Let's go through this and let's talk about latching relays after that. Okay. 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 So, by the way, give me an example of a latching relay. Uh, oh, uh, I don't have one. Latching relay. Okay, help me out. Garage door opener. Oh yeah, that would do it. There you go. So we've now, got. Now it's just state reversal. Yeah. Now we've got different types. Of course, we we've got the the polarized relays, the read relays, safety relays, a whole bunch of stuff. But what we're most concerned about is the relay operation and how it works at that level. And what we've got here, we'll switch back over here to the top-down shot. You guys got a little bit of a sneak peek as we were talking about the different uh, pieces there with Jason. But essentially, you've got this going on. So on our relays, what we have, and of course, we drew a bunch of stuff on here as well in, in green and blue. But what's happening here is you've Thank got you, Jason. basically four different types of relays, right? And there, there's more than that. Physical but there's, yeah, formats. Yeah, there's four for, uh, physical formats. That we, we deal have, with. That, that we deal with primarily. You have a single pole, single throw, so SPST, right? So single pole means that we only have one pole coming in. Single throw means we're just going from, uh, we're just opening and closing one connection. A single door. A single door. Then we go over here to a single pole dual throw relay. So again, we've got a single pole here, so just one, one door, but we're, we're throwing it into two separate connections. Think of a Y. Yep, exactly. You're at a Y in the road, do you go right or do you go left? Exactly. So then, of course, we go down here and we've got our dual pole single throw relay. This means that we have two poles coming in. So we have two doors, right, that are happening. And we're only throwing it from either an open connection or a closed connection for two setups. Railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. Just to switch, yep. uh, switch into railroad tracks. Exactly. Now, lastly, we have the dual pole dual throw. Now, this setup here is kind of interesting because you've got two inputs, you've got two doors, and then we've got two separate outputs for each door. So we can go either here to normally open or normally close. And then we can go back and forth between them. And typically when you're looking at a relay like that, mm -hmm. it's for dual signals that are going in conjunction with each other. Yes. Like audio, left and right audio. Yep. So Because they're I, not they're not split, they're not treated as a matrix. Now where one can do something different from the other. Brent, what is your favorite thing to automate? Blinds. 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 Right? Because blinds, when people see stuff go up and down, yep. it's that whole James Bond thing. Lights are cool. Yeah. Audio is cool. Yeah. But you know what? Blinds move. They move, right? It's very cool. So what I've done for us today, I've taken uh, I've taken that relay. It's, it's, and um, how did you know I was going to say blinds? Well, you and I have had this discussion for oh, one, okay. but then also how, how do you control blinds? Relays. With the relay. That's really how you control it. So really the question comes down to how does a relay work? We know that, yeah, that there's poles and it throws and it makes different connections and that's how it works that way, right? But how does it work? How does it make that throw, right? So, 
the, and this rolls back to when I was talking about energize, because what's happening is in order for us to throw a relay, we have to energize it. Now, how do we energize it? Well, we start off with something that has power in it. Now, this is a 12 volt relay. Is there money involved? Uh, uh, well, if this was that ba that brand, I guess there would be, but this is not that brand. This is some no, other, I was just thinking an energizer. Yeah, but you're you're close. You're very close. So what happens, of course, is that this is a 12 volt relay, and this is looking for a certain type of voltage and a certain amount of amperage to open and close it. Okay. Uh, luckily, it just so happens that I've got a 12 volt little little. I don't even know what these are called. It's small. A it's the, it's a small alkaline. Battery petite. 12 volt. Yeah. Sure, battery petite. Yeah, we'll go with that. Now, my favorite thing, of course, with the re with, with the reason why I really like relays is the clack. The clack. You got to hear that, that that clicking noise. So what I did here was I've got the microphone here. We'll do this. Tell me if you guys can hear it. I don't think they're gonna hear that. I don't know. They might. Oh, I love the clack. Anyways, so to hear a bunch of relays to get something set up in in a system and you hear just a bunch of relays go click 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 all the way through. Think of lighting control. Oh yeah. Well, uh, they're at, at uh, they're, they're at the yeah. house. We, we we deal with the, the the vantage lighting and that. My favorite thing to do is sit there and turn it on all the lights on at once <laughs> and all <laughs> the lights <laughs> off at once. And <laughs> it goes, tick, tick 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 tick. It's my favorite thing. Anyways, so. How does it work? This is how it works. We are taking uh, it. Okay, have you done the experiment? And I'll ask this to the to the chat. Oh, very cool. Yeah, uh, Tron uh, uses uh, relays Hi, with driveway loops to trigger automation events, um, not just to open and close the driveway, but to trigger automation events in the system. Really cool way to do that. The, so you're basically doing if someone drives up to the driveway or is leaving the driveway, it triggers something to happen inside the house uh, or turn on certain lights and stuff. That's a really cool way to do that. I like that idea. Um, by the way, I'm going to ask this out there. Has anybody found an Alexa enabled IO? And specifically, not a relay, but an I.O. Well, because we have the relay here. Right. You want I.O. to trigger Alexa to right. do when, something. Right, when something opens or closes a sensor. Yes. I want to send a command to Alexa based on that. Right. So, um, yeah, if you guys know anything, let, let us know Please in, let us in know, the chat. I haven't found anything. Okay. So, how specifically does a relay work? Now, have you done, uh, I'll ask you because, uh, or I'll ask the, the, the chat as well. Um, have you done that old school experiment where you took an iron uh, uh, nail and you took a copper wire and you wrapped it around and around and around and around it and you hooked it up to like a little battery? Remember and when I was young, there were no iron iron nails. This is true. I'm sorry. Um, this you, you had you had wooden dowels at this yes, point. Yes, we were still for, for, we were still beating things yeah, in with exactly. dinosaur bones. Yes, exactly. Okay, sorry. So. Have you watched someone else, or have you seen videos? I've Anyways. seen it on television. <laughs> By the time I became an old man, TV was out. Uh huh. Okay, good. Yeah. Black and white, and yeah, I've yeah. seen it on TV. Okay, so you, you take that iron uh, uh, nail and you wrap a, 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 a copper coil wire. of uh, copper wire around it, and you run a, an electrical uh, DC signal through it or DC power through it, and then you take that and you put it to like some paper clips or some other nails and stuff, and it picks it up. Then, as soon as you remove that DC power from it, then all of a sudden everything falls. And what have it, it you just made? It. You've created a relay. An electromagnet. An electromagnet. Pardon me. Yeah, you, you created an, an electromagnet. So, but essentially you've created ha the other half of a relay. So what we were talking the about before. The, the functionality. The functionality. Exactly. So actually, no, pardon me. You've, you've created the, 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 the electrical part of it, the working part of it, the, the mechanical part of it. That comes next. So let's see. Randall is saying, if you like the sound of relay contactors, find an old video of a telephone. Con uh, yes, central yeah. office. The relay action and the sounds were incredible. Yes, you, you would hear them going off in the background, tick 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 tick, because uh, there's well, the calls well, and everything by the else way, going when you, through. When you dialed on the phone, mm -hmm. what you heard was the relay in the phone, right, ticking the voltage out for the call. Yeah. So when you took that zero and you went all the way up and went tick 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 tick, that was a relay triggered by that rotary dial. Well, and what it was doing is it was telling the main office. Yeah, just sending it was counting numbers, right? Like telegraph. Yeah, exactly. Ah, see, that's cool. Well, now, at that time, were they? There was there a person sitting there listening for the ticks, or was it a machine at this point? Yes, and then it became automated. Then it became automated because it was done in a specific time frame. Now you didn't clarify what type of phone we're talking about. We're talking about a a, a rotary phone at that point. Now, yes, I am. I, I well, I am a younger, you know, the 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 young man uh, in this case, the non legacy uh, fellow, the non legacy fellow. Uh, I, I I do NLF. know what those are. Yeah, I I do know. What, yeah, the NLF. Um, so. Now, basically, we'll go back to the nail. When you're talking about that nail, what's happening then at that point is you're creating an electromagnet. And when you have power going through it and you touch it to a, some paper clips and it picks it up, well, guess what? You've created a magnet. You're picking up the, that stuff there. But 
when you disconnect it, you the magnet or everything drops out from underneath of it. And that's the coil that we see inside of that. And that's the coil that we see inside of this. So we'll switch over here so you can see this, and I'm much better at this than you are, so you can actually see it. So that well, thank copper you for the coil, I'm, I'm just you know and make it easy on you. So you see that copper there. That copper is the coil. That's the, basically the same as wrapping it around of uh, an iron nail of some kind. So what happens then is you send 12 volt power through the wires. Also, what's kind of fun about this, this is 12 volts, and normally you don't feel 12 volts if you touch like you know battery leads mm -hmm. or whatever, but when you open and close this a bunch of times, you can actually feel the now, current as it comes out. If you have a bad connection on one of those, mm -hmm. either end of that, what do you wind up getting? A lot of noise and a lot of, of chatter. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, exactly. So The relay's just going... So when you close this, what's happening is we are now energizing that coil inside of there. And so if we had, I don't think I've got anything out here with me, but if I had some paper clips, I could take this and actually go and touch it and it would pick up the paper clips. Uh, and what that's doing then at that point is we are now pulling that, that connection inside there over to the side and making a physical connection. So we're not sending a high current through the electromagnet inside of this. We are using a low current to trigger something high else flow. to click to make a connection and create that uh, a flow for the high currents. And those relays can handle typically up to 30 amps. Yes. Where a genuine typical switch in a dashboard is an amp or two. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, one thing that you were talking about before is the old uh, uh, fog lights or old, you know, uh, light Lots bars or whatever current, it yeah. is. You had a there lot of current. There were no light bars back then. Well, that, well yeah, we, we had the, the uh, K, what Multiple was it? Multiple CBs. KC or, or CK. CBs. C, yeah, CBs. And so what those are, of course, is those are ha uh, halogen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are halogen lights, and those are drawing a heck of a lot of power, especially at 12 volts. Uh, you got to think that's pulling how many amps? You're probably amps pulling at that point. 50 amps with Easy. with with four lights up there. And you try to run 50 amps down like an 18 a switch, gauge or, or through melt. a switch, it's going to melt all of it through there. So instead, you would use the relay. You would keep your runs that are high a high current short because this would stay under the hood or would stay close to the battery or power source. You would run that to that and then up to the light. Then you would run your low voltage or sorry your low, low current, current. Yeah, your low current uh, wires inside the the to the switch to the switch and then at that point you're just doing one two maybe three amps not even that not even that right because all you gotta do is energize the coil exactly so that's how a relay works you're just basically taking a light switch and you're turning it on, uh, on uh, off and on uh, in fact if you wanted to make your own actually this is really cool uh jason told us before the show today that over at our ii our, our installer institute uh, they created a they made their own super giant size uh, relay. relay, and they would be really cool. Maybe we'll get that on in one of these episodes. Uh, let us know over in the chat if you want us to see, if you want us to talk about that, and maybe get it on on the show, uh, or leave it down in the comments below. And we certainly would always enjoy having Jason back to talk more because he yeah. does know his stuff. Oh yeah, Jason. Actually, he's uh, uh, what's that that uh, uh, certification? Uh, MECP. MECP. Yeah, he's MECP certified. Well, he was and the he was the trainer and ran the school for a bunch of years, so he knows yeah. his stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you can actually make your own relay, and this is how you would do it. You could take a light switch, put something on the actual switch itself that would come off the, uh, off the side to it. You would put something on the end of it that is magnetic or, or is, is drawn by magnets. What's the word for that? It's ferrous. Uh, something that's fair so on the end of it then you would take you create a, an electromagnet at some point at the end of it there and so when it's in the off state it would just kind of rest there like that you would have to get a, a light switch that was didn't have a clicker anymore it was just kind of loose but then what you could do is you could put electrical signal through that piece there and it would pull that up and make the connection uh inside of it and turn on the lights that's all it is. Seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work to just you know make when one thing there's for lots it. of other relays you can buy right now like mm -hmm. for example the uh, Amazon light switches. Yeah. It's just a relay. That's all it really is. It's, it's triggered by... It's got a very low current trigger built mm -hmm. into it from Alexa. Yep. That triggers a high current. Um, yeah. Hand me the... This is one of my favorites oh, right here. Oh, yeah, this is great. Uh, real quick, Randall is saying, one important thing to remember about relays is the uh, coil will generate a very large counter EMF voltage... And it can. ...when changing state. Do not remove the protection diodes across the coil. You are exactly right. That is one really one big One of the thing. problems with the noise is, and this is why HDMI generates so much noise. Because it's constantly opening and closing. Yep. Every, you know, how many times? Is, uh, a, a millisecond? Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, exactly. 
So yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. There is a diode, or there should be a diode in there that actually helps to mitigate that from happening. Um, it's a big. I have a book. I was gifted a book from Stuart, uh, where it's it's a book of uh, like a hundred and or nine or some large number of words that are big words that you should use. And this, and this you week's learn. word is mitigate. One of the words is mitigate, and it's a great word. It's one of my favorites now at this point. Anyways. This is. This is a board I got for controlling window shades. Yeah. This is a 32 relay yeah. board that's serial controlled. Do you want to show them? Sure. Lean forward. There you go. This thing is awesome because it does have 32 relays. And doing voltage reversal, mm -hmm. I can do blinds up and down on it. Yeah. So this will run 16 blinds yeah. at 32. Oh, it's and and it's expandable. Uh, yes. Do you know who makes it? Or who are the oh, makers of that piece? Oh, I don't remember. I bought several of these. I mean, you could almost have these made uh, uh, yep. at a PCB factory of uh, some kind. Yep. Make it pretty easy. It's powered by 12 volt. Um, and you can, it's just iorelay.com. iorelay.com. You gotta love uh, circuit boards. Pretty straightforward, right? And it wasn't that much money. Mm -mm. So this one's really cool too because it's RS-232 driven. Right. Now, but you can also put on an IP module. Ah, so it's just a little module that, that, yep. that communicates with mm -hmm. the board. So. What else can we do with relays? What are some, some other neat well, things that, that you've seen happen? In the early days of car audio. Yes. Particularly the very early days of portable CD players before there was in dashes. Okay, cool. You, you and I talked about this before the show. Yeah. What we would have to do then is you would take an RCA cable, mm -hmm. cut one end off, and use a double throat, double pole switch. Yes. You would come RCA out of the head unit because they didn't have aux inputs in those days. Yeah. I want to draw this because this is actually a really cool way that, that you did this. Keep going. We would take one pole, go, you put one pole into one source into the NO, mm -hmm. say the CD player. Yep. Left channel into one pole, right channel into the other, and common the grounds. Yes. And then the other source goes into the NC. Yep. The common becomes the output to the amplifier. Yeah. So now there's no volume control, there's nothing, but this is how we switched between sources in the early days. The mechanical switches would work, but they generally added a lot of noise and did not click as quickly as the relays did. Yeah. Nor did they look as cool. So, because you could have just a, a nice little button on the. You did have to have latching. Yes. A latching button. So. Uh, what you were doing basically. So we've got our 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 dual pole, a uh, dual pole, dual throw relays. Right, right now. So which side is the source on? So source is going to be over no. here. No. Oh, no. All right. Correct. Right. Yeah. The sources are over here. So you're going to have. Uh, let's see. So let me make sure I do this correctly here. So you're going to have CD left and CD right, and then you'll have uh, radio. Uh, radio left and radio right. Right. Correct. And then amp. And then you would have the output for the amp. So you would have output amp to the amp. Yes. Left and amp. Right. Now, these are all positive, correct? So you've got yes. positives on all of these connections yes. here. And so what you would do instead if the negative is you, just you tie would, them all you together. Would tie them all together. So the negative for the radio uh oh, radio, can I spell? And then you've had the CD player and then you've even got the amplifier as well. Right, the RCAs. All, all the negatives Cuz that's all common. Wired together, right? Yep. Yeah. So now you could do at this point you could do what depending on the relay you got it could be two buttons mm -hmm. or a single button. If you did two, if you did two single, single uh, double pole single throw, yes, you would have actually two buttons. Yeah, yeah. You don't want two buttons. You want to have. Well, you say that. What would, what would the, it the use cool. of? Oh, right. Yeah, so you could have the, the, the latching piece for that. So Right, but you didn't have to have latching, because if it's a momentary, yeah. it's only switching as long as you hold the button down. Right. So, when we are, and we want, I wanted to talk about this before, was the latching. When, okay. And we're going to talk about the latching because of how relays work for the modern day without physical relays because that's actually kind of useful for a lot of things. That is essentially what HDMI is. Exactly. It's a micro relay that is non-latching. Right. So when we are dealing with, uh, with latching, what's, what, what happens when, a, when you use a latching relay? It's, okay, let's say we, we send voltage. Mm -hmm. 
in a state reversal latching relay, when we send voltage, it reverses wherever it is now. If it's here, it goes there. Mm -hmm. And it stays there until we send more voltage. Because as soon as you, when you press the, the garage door button, for yep. example, yep. it closes and opens right back up as soon as you release the button. Yeah. yeah. But the garage door does not, it just keeps doing whatever it was doing. Yep. So this is actually really important also with that because like uh, Randall was saying is that the, the coil generates uh, um, an electromagnetic current or, or an e EMF mm -hmm. or EM radiation, pardon me. It creates EM radiation. Now, it's also creating, and not only is it, it creating EM radiation. By the way, what does EM stand for? Uh, electromagnetic. Okay. Um, because it, it's, it, it is an electromagnet. It's creating electromagnetic radiation. So you're correct about when you actually, when it's switching, uh, is it creating a, a spike of, of EM? Yes. But when it's also just operating, if you have a current running through it, technically it's generating radiation at that point, which can have an effect on if you're using it like you were t using it before with the radio and well, the now, CD. Well, let's talk about... Go back to the latching a second. Yeah, well, that, that, why, that's where I was going with that. Why do we want a latching? Because what you're doing at this point is you are instigate or you're you're energizing. Uh, I almost used a, another big word in, in the wrong way, uh, or maybe the right way. Instigating would instigating be another? I way don't know. To? Give me the sentence. Uh, it, you are in, you are instigating that signal to uh, to trigger something. That, anyways, no. You're okay. an insti you are instigating an event. And, yes, exactly. So I could could have used it right. So you're energizing it with a latching relay. You're only energizing that coil, that specific coil, whether it be the open coil or the closed coil, uh, when you want to, when you want something to happen. Because at that point, it's activated. It throws that that uh, uh, pole to the one side, makes the connection there, and then de and then removes the energy from that coil. So now we don't have any electrical signal going through the coil. It's just a, it's nothing's happening, but it's locked in that position. So the other side of it is to... we don't have to track its state with the transmitter. So if you've got a broadcaster, if you've got a garage door button in your car and your right. wife's got a garage door button, yes. and they're not in the same state, yep. Yep, yep. doesn't know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's called a state reversal relay. Ooh. Is that the same thing as a latching relay? Well, it, whenever it gets a trigger, it just reverses whatever it is. Oh, it doesn't so matter. If okay. If it's left, it goes to right. If it's right, it goes to left. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. State reversal. State reversal. As soon as it gets some kind of signal, and then it just it flips. It goes the other way. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Right. Anytime cool. it sees a trigger, it just reverses. So that's pretty much all I had for relays because they are pretty basic and pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on. Until you to start wiring with them. Until you start, yeah, exactly. Now, you, you can get pretty heavy into when, those. When, when you're wiring, and there's a difference between wiring one of these mm -hmm. and wiring one of these. Yes. Because this is just two wires. Yeah. And for example, our CS-IR kit CCUS. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a, an overhead? Yep. When you're looking at the CS-IR kit CCUS, there's a big Phoenix plug with four ports on it. And those ports are nothing. Yep. And then we have A, close. B. You, you don't have to draw upside down. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> Use that one. That one's almost dry. There you go. I keep forgetting that. And you've told me that uh -huh. numerous times. <laughs> you were doing very well. I, I have to it's, say. It's not easy. It, you're, you're doing very well drawing upside down, so. <laughs> you are late. You missed, the, you missed the, the majority of it. When did you get on? Let us know in, in the chat. I believe that is, uh, the, it's got, it's Symphony Hi-Fi. Okay, so. This is just, just ignore that one. Yep, that one's not doing anything. So A close, B close, common. Now, Brent, why should we ignore that one? Why do we put a fourth one on there? Because we couldn't buy a three banger that fit the board. <laughs> this board was a modification it was a pre of an existing right? yep. uh, IR connecting board that had mm -hmm. um, ground signal voltage and a um, 12 volt feedback. Yes. So yep. that's why. Yep. Yep. So. What you have here, a common in this case, typically is the ground. Typically. But it could be something else. You could yep. go, you could have two sources going in here. You could actually take two of these and use them as a stereo source selector. Yes. Yeah, use it just like you were using it for the yep. CD and, and the radio. Yep. yep. So, you've got, instead of calling it NO and NC, Yep. because it doesn't really matter, I just called it A close, B close. Yeah, most, um, most guys out there who have dealt with this know what NO and NC means. A lot of people who have never used it before don't understand what right. that means, and so it's easier to say just A close, A close B, close, B close. Yep. 
and then common. So with this, typically this is a voltage in for us. Yeah. Our signal in. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. In the case of the AIO, it's just either trigger. It's either one, yep. And then you have an out. Generally, if it's an AIO, you have an out and you just don't use the B. Yeah. Because we're only triggering one device. Yeah, because we're just trying to either open or However, close. If you have certain systems where you've got a f uh, projector and a flat panel, mm -hmm. and you need, you, you're using a dual output AVR, yep. and you need two AIOs, one so you can, this way only one hot plug is hot at a time, yep. you would send one to flat panel, and one to projector. Yep. And it just goes back and forth, because for Crestron guys, these are interlocked, meaning only one can be hot at a time. Yes. That is the advantage of two doors. Yep. Only one door can be open at a time. Exactly. Now, Brent, the way you're describing, the, the way that the operational of the CS IRCAT CCUS works looks like a latching relay. It is, is that a latching relay in there? But it's a triggered, it's a voltage, as long as, as when you send the command, it holds it. Right. So once the command has been sent, mm -hmm. either A close or B close, you don't have to continually send the command. Right. It goes here and it stays there until it sees a change. Yes. Yeah. So if I tell you to, to go sit at your desk mm -hmm. and you stay there until I come and get you. That's what, what, what's happening with, that's this, what's with the happening. relay. There you go. Now, you're not going to do that because I no. know you. Well, I, I'm, I'm busy. I have things that actually I have and to mostly do. Mostly you just don't listen to well, me. Well, there's that too. So. But that's what it amounts to. As, as long as, as soon as A is told to, to go mm -hmm. hot or high. Yeah. Nothing's going to change until a B high command is sent. Right. So, Brent, here's where the here's where relays are going. This is this is the the fun part about it. Um, oh, it is a great video for using the AIO too. It's it's perfect for it. And actually, we're going to be talking about the CSIR kit CCUS. US, oh gosh, I'm Friday. quick at that, on Friday, and we'll talk about how it works with the AIO2 on Friday as well. And I'm that. really sadly bummed I'm not going to be here. Oh, you, I know, it's a, it's a really good, that's one of your, one your of babies, things, right? Yeah. It's one of your things. So, now, the real question is, now that we are into the digital age, where do we, use, where do we see relays today? Now, I'm not specific, I'm not talking about like the HDMI, which we talked about that, mm -hmm. how it's just open and closed. And that's the same thing with any electrical signal of any kind. You open up your computer, your CPU is just thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of relays. That's all it really is. That's all that's happening inside of there. It's just built into a certain sequence. What does FPGA stand things. for? Uh, field programmable, uh, uh, Oh, I, I lost it. Field, program, field programmable something. Gate array. Gate array. And what's a gate? It's a relay. It's, it's a relay. open and closed. So, now the real thing is, is then, and this is where it's fun, if anybody's out there using any kind of uh, um, if this then that service, what's a relay? If I see voltage on this connection, right, I'm going to do this. That's all it is. So I see here's 12 volts uh, on the on the coil. When that 12 volts happens, I'm going to close this relay here. Which takes me back to my previous request. If anybody knows of an Alexa enabled I.O. device. <laughs> it's a great thing. So when you Please share it with us, when, when you're when we're dealing with with today's programming when you when you do any kind of if this then that statement motion sensors thermal sensors yeah. door sensors window sensors if this happens, occupancy sensors if this happens over here do that guess what you've created a digital relay that's all you've done it's that's basically it so brent so our whole world is driven by relays now yeah relays can also be triggered by analog values which as you said on voltage yeah so for example one of the things I've done, I have a Crestron system in my house. Yep. I wanted feedback from my alarm panel through the Crestron hard buttons. Yes. So what I did is I am monitoring on the alarm. I have mm -hmm. it programmed so that when the alarm is armed, it turns on an LED output. Yep. That goes into an IO on my Crestron. Yep. Whenever my Crestron sees voltage go high and I've anything above this, yep. it's considered high. Yep. It then sends an oscillating relay signal mm -hmm. to the LEDs on all of my hard button keypads. So blink, blink, To blink, let you know it's on. Just to let me know the alarm is on. Yeah. 
So from any light switch in the house that has the LEDs on it, mm -hmm. you know what's going on. I know the alarm's armed. Yeah. Now, can you, uh, do you have it set up to, okay, so are alarm systems, in, and I'm, I'm showing my, my expertise at this point, do alarm systems just do open close, or do they have different voltage levels to depend on? It depends things? on the panel. Okay. Now, in this case, it's just an open and close for voltage for for an external LED. Yeah. I also have an LED mounted above the front door at the outside, so that when I came home, I could see if anything had changed because if the alarm had been triggered, you would the have LED would be going flashing. On. Ah. So before I walked into the house, you already know. I already know if there's an issue or not. So now, technology's come a lot further since then with yep. feedback and apps and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, but so that that was just simply I tied it into that feed going into my Crestron yeah. processor as an I/O. Anytime it saw the voltage above 0.1 volts or whatever mm -hmm. I picked, it sent the high signal. Yeah. And I know from Control 4 you can do all of that. Pretty much, yeah. But it, and it's all done through if this, if this, then that stuff. Now Control 4 doesn't have like the I/O for different voltages uh, uh, like Crestron does, um, where it's looking for a, a different a change. set, a change in voltage. It's looking for basically it, uh, just is it open any or voltage? Closed. It's looking for anything. Um, unless I'm wrong about that, it's been a while since I've looked, with, with, messed around with any of that. If I'm wrong, let me know. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of what we've we've covered with everything on this. So we're already at. About 45 minutes for the okay. show today. Um, but and this with was this, a fun one because I like relays. Relays are fun. Relays, honestly, if you break it down, relays are the first of the first automation systems. They're the, in fact, just for what it's worth, back mm -hmm. to Legacy Fellow. Yeah. In the early days, what we physically had to do is put relays in products yeah. to tie them to switches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's take, for example, early fireplace controls. Ooh. Let's talk about like the uh, like, like the really old days where, so where you had to make a panel. So what we do is actually take the, the RF remote uh -huh. and hardwire it to the relay on the control system and then hardwire power to it. Yeah. So you would have multiple wires, typically a Cat5 wire coming from your control system yep. up to a remote that you tucked into a cabinet somewhere yep. and you soldered to the switch points. So. If you if you imagine like the old Bond villains and and they're like super high tech hideouts and stuff where the, they can sit in their chair while they're stroking the the, the white cat yeah. or whatever and they hit one button over here and it does something over there. Guess what? That's a relay, mm -hmm. right? That's all it is. He's someone's wired in a bunch of relays into that or one of his henchmen or whatever. If if it's if he was real, uh, but they would wire it all up in there and that's all that's happening. They have just a, a button there. So well, you were telling me about the audio board when you were moving one of the. Car yeah, stereo uh, stores when, when I was working at one of the car audio stores, uh, we moved from one location to another. Uh, and basically, how the way that it works is they, they had created a matrix of relays. That's really what was happening. A matrix of relays to pick and choose different head units, different amplifiers, different speakers, subwoofers, and, and different it was setups just like that. All double throw, double pull. Yeah, because you had it was a it was a stereo signal coming into it, and so that way we knew we could go in and out. Um, you had a selection between whether it was head unit power or RCA uh, line level outs, or pardon me, line level outs versus uh, speaker, level. speaker level outs. Is that right? Is yes. That, yes. Then at that point, then you would select which way it was going that way, and there was some other logic built into it for for happening with that. But all the logic there was, was a relay lot going based. on in those things. There yeah. was a shitload of relays. There's in those a things. lot of stuff going on in those, and uh, and so moving that, it's it, when you pulled out this board for the the 32 Just relays. Just took you back to that. Didn't it took you? me back to that because that's all it was. By the way. Um, if you're watching this episode, uh, Mr. You know, Noonan, you're a genius. You know who you are. Uh, though you did <laughs> that board was amazing, uh, and I'm really sad I had to take it apart. And I, I'm guarantee you, I did not put it back together the right way, uh, or the but way that you, that, that you had put it together. But it was very cool. Uh, so, anyways, all that to say, um, that's pretty much all we've got going on with relays. I just uh, got one one quick question. Yeah. How can our listeners get the really new cool tech the tip really shirt? The really new cool stuff. So the tech tip shirt, we're not sure if that one's going to go live or not. Uh, we we had some oh. uh, we had some interesting things come up uh, with with the logo, but um, oh. hopefully hopefully soon. Uh, but you can actually get some cool uh, Metro AV gear uh, if you go to metroav.com, uh, or you can of course go uh, find us on Instagram as well, guys. It's at AV Tech Tips um, because we are. 
we're, we want to get stuff out to you. You can you can also get stuff to us. So if you take a picture of something you're working on, send it to us on Instagram. Uh, and of course, you can always see what we're working on to get ready for the shows. You get some back uh, behind yeah. the scenes stuff. We really do rely on your great ideas to make what we're doing better. And thank yeah. you for the feedback and the questions and, along and with the that, suggestions. What do you all think would be a good topic for us to talk about next? Do you want us to talk about something uh, with automation basics or with anything in the industry for the basics part of it? Turn do you tables. want us to do a... Uh, uh, hey, Leo, um, do you want us to talk about antennas? You know, antennas? Do you want us to talk about Blu ray players and TVs? Do you want, because we just had our episode on AVRs, and I gotta say, guys, that was our best episode so far as far as people commenting and, and uh, talking in the chat. Again, everyone, thank you so much for doing that. I want to have an amp episode um, just because amps are cool. Amps are really cool. Can we get an amp and take it apart yes. and, and see what's inside of it? I'll pull my, we can bring my A51 in here, and I've got that. Um, the fancy one the, from the, um, the rust sound in there. Or no, the... uh, we can sure. Um, now, what's the big one I took over to Jeff's at um, Symphony High Five? The or ADA. That, no, 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 uh, Symphony High Five. <laughs> That's you. Uh, the ADA amp. A, the ADA amp. Yeah, the big okay. one. The six six by one. Was that the one six... that's like seventy five or eighty pounds or whatever? Yeah. And it's it's just a five channel amp. Well, and that's uh, my Parasound. Oh, that's the Parasound. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's I, I I did say rust sound before. Parasound is the one that yes. that you have in there. So, yeah. Big uh, giant trains. If you all think that would be good, uh, good topics of conversation for us to, to talk about let us know yeah, in the, we in, in the chat section you over hear. here yeah uh or put it down in the comment section or hit us up on instagram metro uh, sorry uh at av tech tips uh, uh for the uh instagram uh and then of course you can always call us 386-492-8584 is our tech support line now we both now have direct phone numbers yes we do Mine is 386-202-6137, and Adam's is? 386-202-6132, uh, and of course you can email us. Our email up addresses have changed. Our, e our old ones still work the way that they did before, so if you have shorter. those. The new ones are shorter, so it's just your, uh, our name, so adam.rogers or brent.mccall uh, at metraav.com. Uh, so send us an email if you have questions about what we're talking about, or hey, if you're working on a project uh, and you want to just do a sanity check, give us a call. That's what we're here for. Please. It's always better to find out you're crazy beforehand. Mark Silver says, Richard Schramm won't like that. <laughs> he owns Parasome. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah, sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. That, right? uh, there's nothing, <laughs> there's not a single bad thing I can say about Mr. Schramm. <laughs> He's an awesome individual. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm sorry for, for using the wrong name. And um, you know, let's face it, it's a John Curl design. Oh, so okay. That, is, that, is there quite a bit to talk about then with yes, that, there is, is there? Okay. Um, now, don't forget, Friday afternoon, Yep. Adam has a show on the CS-IR Kit CCUS. Yep. So come back Friday now, at 3 p.m. The difference between what we do on Wednesday and what happens on Friday, Yep. Wednesday is, honest to God, strictly for you guys. Tell us what you want to hear. Yep. We're here for that. Friday is very specifically about our products. Our products and how to use them and make them work correctly in the field. Yeah. So we uh, on Wednesdays, the whole idea is to get you information about the industry, different ways to the basics of something. Make or, your job you know, go better. Make your job go better. And then Fridays are specifically about our products. So come back at 3 p.m. on Friday where we're going to try watch and the keep, videos. Yeah, watch the videos. We're going to try and keep uh, the Friday videos based on whatever happens that Wednesday. So today we were talking about relays. So we'll talk about our relay item, the CSIR kit CCUS. And that's it. On Friday. Yeah. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. It's been a great show. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. So, Brent. Yes, Adam. Reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. And call, call tech, tech support. Call tech support. Have a great day. We'll see you guys later.